Hi, it's Suzanne from UnsongDesigns.com. Thank you for joining me. Today's project is the first of the Eastern Palace Suite projects I'm going to show you. And if I can get the cat's bottom off my thinlets, it would be really, it would be helpful. Right, now this is a little box I've made. Um, it's sealed at one end and it just opens at the other. And um, I've used the thick Whisper White, uh, very vanilla cardstock which is new in the new, new catalogue that's coming out. Um, I've used some of the designer series paper which comes with the Eastern Palace suite and this is one of the dies that I've used. It's such a versatile suite I cannot tell you how many different projects people will be coming up with and you will see it, I'm just looking for a tissue or a scrap of paper because I've got ink all over my stamp my block. Um, you will see it everywhere. It's all over. It'll be all over Pinterest and YouTube and um, and all over the place because it is such a beautiful, beautiful suite. So I'm going to show you how to make this. When I was thinking about how I was going to decorate the box, I didn't want to cover the whole thing in the designer series paper. Um, so I decided to do some hand stamping. Now I have, I've done it already because you do not want to sit and watch me uh, stamp the whole thing. However, I have also got um, a little scrap a scrap of card here, so I'll just give you a quick, I mean I know you know how to do it, but I'll just show you. And this is the wrong size block, I have just placed a stamp in a border, um, with a scrap of paper, I've just placed a stamp in a border and ordered every single size of block imaginable, so I've got them all. So it's just random stamping um, and I've changed the same colours but I've changed it round for this one. Um, what I've done is on the box I used the, uh, this is two of the new ink colours um, and the pale one is lemon lime twist and then it's got dapper denim, and very vanilla and then this is tranquil tide which is a lovely colour, it's this one, it's really beautiful. So with one of the tiny decorative elements, um, I have got my finger, I keep sticking my finger in it, I'm just stamping like that, uh, cat hairs, so I mean, I've, just, I've just done this quickly to show you, but it's all there is to it, and a clean block, a, a clean stamp would be helpful. So, get aside. Um, this needs, if I can get the cat off my notes, and there. Um, as I said, the card is eight and a half by six and a half, and we are going to score this on the long side at one and a half inches, which is there, four inches, five and a half inches, and eight. And then we're going to turn it round and just checking to see, now this, this is okay, I was just checking to see whether I'd got some sort of bad scoring. It's an inch and a half um, and four and a half and six. If I had got some sort of poor scoring at the, uh, stamping at the bottom, uh, on one side I could have used that as the bottom. So put that to one side. And this is going to be the top of your box where you've got the narrow bit. So we're going to fold and burnish, I think, first. And I'm going to need the envelope punch board because, unfortunately, um, the corner rounder is retiring, which is a very sad day. I use that corner, corner rounder a lot, but if you've got the envelope punch board, you have got the... Um, the corner rounder at the top of that which I, I actually did use quite a lot, a lot as well so um, so we're going to use that in a minute just burnish your creases got ink all over my fingers I've got ink all over everywhere I've got it on the grid paper as well there you go so this is your bottom where you've got the bigger um, rectangle 
So we're just going to cut up and I'm going to notch out. There. And here. It's almost a shame to cut off the, um, the stamped images. There we go. And then you've got a little rectangle here which you need to get rid of completely. Like that. And I'm just going to chamfer that. Um, when you come to do this, we're going to cut a bit off here as well, but when you come to do the top, you'll need to decide which is your front and which is your back. So it's going to close like that. And this obviously is going to be the back, so you will need to keep the front. So you will get rid, we can chamfer this out here. We're going to get rid of this. And then as you can see here, we don't need a tab here and a tab, tab this side. So we're going to keep this one and we're going to get rid of this one. It's not a tab, it will be a top. Like that. Just cut along there like that. Um, so when we make the box up, you're going to have, these will obviously be the sides, the flaps that, tabs that f fold in, and this will be the top of your box. So we need to fold and just fold, cut down here and we're going to get rid of this little rectangle on the top and again we are going to just notch those out you don't have to take too much off but it just helps your box close properly like that uh, and the same with this one so if I cut that there first I think and then I can sort of can I see what I'm doing? not, not easily uh, but cut that right to that first score line and notch a bit out there and notch a bit out there and that's your box so I'm just going to straighten that up a little bit before I round the corners there you go that's better so the envelope punch board and let's just fold those out of the way and then you just pop it in the top like that and like that there you go that's that done let's slide this back in because I'll lose it so now we can make up the box and I've got the Tombow out but I think I'm going to use fuse because it is in theory less messy. I'm just going to grab this because I know when I do bits here like this I know I'm going to get it all over the place. So close to the score line and like that and then just make sure it's not sort of over the edge, over the, it's gone over the back fold it in and you've got um, the box put together and now we just do the bottom but again what, find out which is your front and back because it's better to have the base of your back the base of your box pointing to the back of the box so all the seams are pointing in the one direction Make sure it's on the edges. Make sure your box is straight and then you can just, if you've cut it correctly, does that need a bit, I think that needs a tiny, tiny bit more of a notch. There we go. Does that go in? Yes. 
um, and your box should close nice and neatly. Now then, um, I've got designer series paper around here. This is cut at an inch wide. And what I'm going to do, the easiest thing, I find the easiest thing, is to start, again, make sure you've got the back of your box. So this is the back. And start with the DSP somewhere in the middle. And then just fold it round like that. And I can actually cut a bit off because this is too long. So I'm just going to cut there. So this is an inch by um, good, eight and eight and seven eighths of an inch. I'll write that on my notes because when I come to do another box um, I won't have to wonder what I've done. Right, so let's just make sure that's correct. Make sure, because I don't want to put my um, creases in the wrong places. Yes, so I don't burnish this with a uh, um, a burnishing tool I think with the designer series if you're doing a um, a card belly band thank you if you're doing a card belly band then yes you probably would need a burnishing tool but I think for DSP it should be all right now and I'll put that the back of my box so this is going to go round like that. So just, um, again, with my scrap of paper, I'm just going to, because this will go all over the place, um, a bit of fuse on the back. You could use snail. Again, making sure I've got the right, I know which way around my box is. Now when you're using designer series paper for something like this, you need to just be aware of which way, if there's a, a pattern that has a particular top and bottom or a particular orient orientation, then um, just make sure you think about that. I didn't want it going sort of that way around. I wanted it sort of going north-south rather than east-west. Right, so now we've got um, I think I'm going to stamp it in the same colour because I really like that. Um, and the stamp comes from the Eastern Beauty set. And I'm going to stamp this onto um, some of the very vanilla cardstock, or I would if I could find my ink. There you go. And this is just the thank you. Yep, it doesn't matter that it's not particularly straight because we're going to die cut it. It might actually have been easier to die cut it first. Oh well. Now, bring these back in and I've got my circle. This is from the nesting circles, which I'm going to be using round the... Uh, that's what I've used to cut out the blue, um, which is daffodenum, which is one of the in colours. And... It's actually, um, it'll be around for another 12 months and they've, again, they've very cleverly used it with, um, with this suite. So I'm going to pop both of these through in the big, sh big shot together. Now this is the one, I think, no, this is the one I used previously. So I'm going to use this one now, um, just to make it a little bit different. And I should just bring my big shot in. I've been um, rearranging the craft room. I've bought some shelves, so it's quite nice having a, actually having places to put everything instead of having it in heaps on the floor or you know whatever. Just never being able to find what I want. So, oops. The first platform goes in. Uh, cutting plate goes in. I don't want any bits. 
and I'm going to put that. Um, now this is the one we're going to have to place a bit more carefully because I want this in the middle. I think that's about right. Then I'm going to pop on my other cut, um, cutting plate and I'm just going to hang on, pass that through like that. And just because it's a deck, it's quite um, an intricate die, I'm going to put it through a couple of times. And we should have the grand unve unveiling. So we've got our dapper denim and we've got Get that out of the way. We've got the um, the decorative one. And now we're going to have to put this back on. She says, having just put her big shot away, which is silly because I'd forgotten I'd done that. Um, so again, we've got, I don't know whether I like that one quite so much, but we've done it, so we're going to use it. So I'm just going to pop the circle on there like that. And this is what I mean with it being incredibly clever because it's coordinating with other products that we've got. And back with the big shot, this will only need to go through once, I think, because it's just a very simple shape. And that should, there you go. So I did this just because when I put this on the box it got lost and I just thought you know what no it needs a bit of colour behind it so um, I decided that I would put uh, the, the sweet unfortunately the bundle doesn't come with the, um, the cardstock that I really want to get my hands on the lemon lime twist cardstock and I really want that because I think it's going to be a stunner. I know people who have had their hands, got their hands on it, um, and they do say it's lovely. So this, just being very careful to place it in the middle, and I'm using dimensionals just because I'd like a little bit of height. Um, a little paper snips, and I'm going to just cut. I don't know if I'll need three, but I might actually need three, four, I think. Because, oh no, I don't, do I? No, it's just got, dearie me. I won't get rid of that. It's just going onto the, onto the DSP, so it just needs to go in the middle. So I think we'll have that one, that nice sort of L-shaped um, dimensional and to make sure that I've got it in the right place 